Good morning, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God, hello. 11.30 a.m., my time here, <laughs> this Friday the 13th, uh, in the glorious, yeah. Well, today, brethren, today is the day we're going to be getting into this video on a subject that the Lord had not had me to address on its own until today. And um, it, it has to do with immigration. Immigration. Okay? Um, I, I have to tell you at the beginning of this video, I am not like some people are who get a little too crazy about the immigration thing. Okay? There are some people out there who really take their seriousness about the immigration thing to a whole other level of madness. Uh, I'm not like that. But when it comes to this, we have to be realistic. And you, my countrymen in America, you have to understand that the Jesuit order, the Roman Catholic Church, has defeated this nation, America, long ago through immigration. Okay? It really has. We're going we're to touch on many things. Um, please get your authorized version of the scripture. And please follow me along in the scriptures that we will be looking at today, word for word, verse by verse. What we're going to be looking at today, be a Berean. Check me out. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Okay? Follow me along. We have several resources that we are going to look at today. We have talked about this, about the Jesuit order, at length in several videos. Um, and also there are other brethren out there who also do extensive work um, exposing the Jesuit order. For example, uh, Perfect Standard KJV. Check out his videos. Uh, short, sweet, to the point videos. I'm um, telling you, it's like, hey, <laughs> you know, this is really happening, okay? This is what you need to be aware of, okay? Roman Catholicism owns America, okay? The Jesuits own America. And virtually from the inception of this experimental nation called America, the Jesuits have had a foothold virtually from the beginning. Virtually from the beginning. From the Calvinistic Puritans that arrived here first, uh, uh, no, but what would come afterwards? Like the original 13 states here in America, one of them was called <laughs> Maryland, Mary's Land, Maryland, the state of Maryland. Named so because it was supposed to be a refuge for persecuted Catholics. And that was what? The 1600s? Something like that? Very long before 1776? I got the book on it. The uh, 13, uh, original 13. America was done for before she even, even began. I, and this has gotten me a lot of heat from a lot of people... I do not believe at all that America was ever a godly nation. It never was. The church of the living God within America is why our Lord has given blessing to this nation. Absolutely because of his body that resides within this nation. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But in and of itself, America was never a godly nation. America in and of itself was never a nation that followed the God of the Scriptures. In and of itself. Our Constitution. Our Constitution. Which is basically a guideline to a subjective um, piece of paper. You know that there were Catholics that signed the Constitution? There were two of them. Do you realize, too, the big movers and, with every pun intended, Quakers? <laughs> I think there were only two Quakers, two or three Quakers, maybe, that signed the Constitution, I think. But 
the big movers and Quakers of the Constitution that so many people adore were Freemasons. People like to argue that about, well, George Washington, he was a Baptist. Yes, he was. But he was first a Freemason. Okay? The Freemasons, very similar to the Jesuit order, um, assume many characters. Assume many things. Benjamin Franklin, that scoundrel devil who's burning in hell. Benjamin Franklin. Yes. Oh, that one, when I said that before, that really got me into some hot water. Oh, yeah. Uh, praise the Lord. <laughs> Benjamin Franklin was not a saved man. He's in hell burning right now as we speak. Okay? He bowed at every altar. Okay? He accepted all things. All right? Pretty much. Pretty much. Pretty much. Okay? When it, when it came for political uh, jangling, he put on the right facade in order to fit the moment, which is what Freemasons do and, of course, Jesuits do. Okay? And ever since, I mean, when you have a state here in America of the original 13 um, called Mary's Land, you know you're in trouble. America, people, my countrymen, America was never a godly nation. Never! Never has been. Never will be. Never has been. It is because of the Church of the Living God. It is because of the saints that any blessing that came to this nation was there because of the body of Christ, the Church of the Living God that resides in this country, doing the works of the Lord, getting the gospel out. Okay? That is why blessings have come to this nation. Not because this nation in and of itself was ever a nation of other. Constitution, okay, the Constitution, the Federalist Papers, and all that kind of stuff. You don't see Jesus Christ ever mentioned once, not once, in the Constitution. Not once. Not once. You hear God, but then again, who's God, right? You got the little G God of the world, right? Who is Lucifer, Satan, that old serpent, the devil, the accuser of the brethren, okay? Little G God of this world, okay? You, hey, some of you, you yourselves, you are your own God, you worship yourselves. Yeah, you do, yeah. But you never see Jesus Christ mentioned in the Constitution, not once, not once. Here's something that you're going to have to accept. The Constitution of America is a Masonic document. It's a Masonic document. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong through the actual Constitution itself by those founders. Prove me wrong. Please. 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 Well, the, the Constitution was uh, set on Christian principles. I myself used to think that too. I, I myself used to think and believe I was deceiving myself. I used to think that. I used to say that. There are videos that you will see on this channel where I even said that that has, was based on Christian principles. No. 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 Different. Do you realize that the kingdom of heaven, which is coming after the time of Jacob's trouble, when our Lord Jesus Christ as king is going to be ruling and reigning, do you realize that most governments are uh, have a single ruler? Even America has a single ruler. Um, there's that Jesuit guy from New York, Spellman, I believe he is, but ultimately the one who rules America is Arturo Sosa. The Black Pope, okay, the Smoking Joe, Kamala Harris, and Napoleon Bonaparte, Donald Trump, uh, they, they're just, they're just there for you. They really are to give you the illusion that you have choice. When it comes to the political sphere of things here in this Jesuit nation of America, dear friend. 
You have no choice. You have no choice. When it comes to that aspect of things, you, you have no choice. Your vote means nothing. You can't do anything about this nation or about the politics. Even if you want to, you can't because the Vatican owns America. The Vatican owns and operates and controls the Freemasons. A lot of people like to deflect. Uh, it's the Illuminati, which was founded by a Jesuit. Why stop? Okay? <laughs> All right? My dear countrymen, you have no choice. When it comes to the political sphere of things here in America, you have no choice. I would personally... I would love to see, here in America, I would really love to see, when it comes to voting time, that the voting places be a desolate wasteland. That we, in America, we stay home. What would happen then? See, the Jesuits have already selected who they're going to put in office after the, the, the puppet guy, uh... Uh, Smoking Joe and Kamala Harris. Who exactly? Don't know. Don't know. I personally believe that it might be time for them to put in a female president. That's what I believe. Hopefully I'm wrong on that. But uh, they've already selected who they're going to put in. And whoever they're going to put in next is going to be worse for this nation than the one, than the predecessor. That's how it always works. Okay? That's how it always works. All right? That's how it always works. So whoever is worse for this nation is who is going to be next that they're going to select. But they already have made their selection. Okay? They already have. But see, to keep up the suspension of disbelief, to give you the illusion, woo, that you have a choice. You do have a choice. Stay home. Stay home. You might be asking me, well, okay, Brad, well, that, okay, Brad, you're entitled to that. What does this have to do with immigration? We have talked at length, you and I, about how the Jesuit order with all these coadjutors, a coadjutor is someone who works for the Vatican. Whether they are an actual Jesuit or not, we are seeing an overrunning of people who are working for the Vatican here on YouTube, here on other sites. Very, very bizarre, very bizarre, these same coadjutors here on YouTube. Uh, and what they're doing is they're trying to plant their seeds in case someone wants to go somewhere else so they got all bases covered. They're, they're very, very petty people. But these coadjutors, there are plenty of videos, especially on this channel, and other brethren have done it as well. Uh, like I said, Perfect Standard KJV, check out his... Uh, Material that the Lord has given him to do. Very, very good. Very good. But the, the whole idea of this infiltration stems by basically bringing someone from the outside, putting them into a position where they can have influence, whether it is through marriage. And we're not going to, we're not, the uh, verses of Scripture that we are going to be looking at have in context marriage but see what happens is when you bring outsiders of another nation who are first loyal to the vatican and plant them here what happens they can be an influence through the moabitish women or the the handsome men of other nations okay see bring other uh people of other nations into america who are first loyal to the Vatican. Who are first loyal to the Vatican. And that small group of people can influence the tide of the politic of that nation. And that same principle is how it is for the coadjutors who have come in calling themselves King James Bible William Christian and stuff like that. And they're, they're more lost than a blind man running a race. Okay? So, with that said, it's kind of a little opening there. Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Matthew chapter 13. This is instruction in righteousness. 
that we are going to be looking at this. You need, you need to understand this, brethren. You need to understand this. We're also going to be looking at a video. I figured out how to do the scene thing here on OBS. We're also going to be looking at a video that a brother sent me, um, which is... <laughs> see, the Catholic Church is very involved in migration, the immigration, of bringing other peoples of other nations into the nation of America. I'm not against that. I'm not against that. But I do understand that the actual legal process... Okay, to bring someone of another nation to America, the legal pro process is number one, expensive. Number two, it is frustrating. Number three, it is very complex and complicated. Unless you have the blessings of the Catholic Church behind you. Unless. Unless, then it seems to be real easy. There are also misconceptions about this. Um, I've heard, I've, I've spake with many of these people, and they all seem to be Trump supporters, too. I, I'm not a Republican, nor am I a Democami. Okay? They're, they, they're, they both stink. Okay? <laughs> the Republican that was during the time of even the writing of the Constitution is not the Republicans that we see today. Okay, if the Republican Party were even a semblance of what it used to be in the days of old, I would, yes, be a Republican. Yes, I would. But uh, <laughs> what we have today is just a joke. It's theater. It's theater. It's drama. That's all it is. That's all it is. But some people have this, um, and this is not actually true. That immigrants have more rights than we who are the citizens of this nation. It depends on what angle you're going from. Um, nowadays, people use the, the crux of discrimination and therefore someone of another nation, not homegrown as it were, could have an advantage. But a lot of people like, like to tell you that uh, foreigners have more rights than we here who are indigenous to this nation. That's not entirely truth, okay? You'll, you'll have to, I mean, to look that up is very, very difficult to look that up and to compare it. Um, on paper, on paper, the indigenous have more than those that are being brought over. But in the uh, reality application of it, Yes, sometimes, but not always. But I had to bring that up. I had to bring that up. Um, about how they say that the foreigners have, uh, that come here, the immigrants, uh, most of them illegally, yes, have more rights than we do. It depends on the circumstances, unfortunately, for that. But go to Matthew chapter 13. Verses 24 on to verse 30. And if you're curious, look that up yourself. Okay, that's not, that's not the point of this video. The point is to get you aware that America has been overrun. America has long been invaded. Okay? Uh, Eric John Phelps had uh, for a long time talked about America being invaded by a foreign nation. Okay? And you have Hollywood movies that have dramatized this, such as... The Chuck Norris movie, Invasion USA, okay? And the horrific 1980s movie, <coughs> Red Dawn, which was about um, uh, Russia invading America, okay? The reality of America actually being invaded by a foreign nation isn't so far uh, fetched nowadays, especially, and this this is actually true about there being uh, troops in Canada, Chinese troops, and I was once at one time sent a lot of information about that that there are Chinese troops in Canada that, if called upon, could come down and invade us. Okay, and also here that is in America already. See, that's the thing. You get people from other nations who are loyal to the Vatican first. 
plant them here and that small people that can influence things and you when it comes time for the Vatican it's like okay it's order whatever let's act they rise up and there we go but America has already been invaded by a foreign nation the Vatican America has already defeated except on the visible visible front okay Matthew chapter 13 Verses 24 on to verse 30. Now, when reading this, you have to remember, okay, this doctrinally is not for us today. This doctrinally is about the time of Jacob's trouble going into the kingdom of heaven, okay? We talk about this in a video, the two raptures, because people want to, uh, at the part where the Lord sends out his angels to take the people Back to get the people away from those who are going to be burned at what we are looking at it's not a redemption of the purchased possession there's only one of those where the Lord says come up hither and it's in the twinkling of an eye the two witnesses in Revelation chapter 11 okay the Lord says to them come up hither but people watch them ascend into heaven which shows us what that the when the Lord says to Elijah and Moses the two witnesses come up hither it's not like that, like the redemption of the purchased possession is. Hence, there is only one redemption of the purchased possession where the Lord says, come up hither, and in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we are caught up together in the clouds, okay? There's only one of those, okay? Even uh, Pete Ruckman, uh, I believe he even said about, mentioned about the two raptures, he at least talked about it. A uh, link for the video that the Lord had me to do on that will be in the description box, okay? There is only one redemption of the purchased possession. Only one. What we are looking at has nothing to do with the redemption of the purchased possession, okay? This, it, treat it, okay? But the point is about how the enemy has sown tares amongst the wheat, okay? This is for our instruction in righteousness. Doctrinally, this has nothing to do with us today. Not a thing, doctrinally, okay? Matthew 13, verses 24, on to verse 30. Uh, sorry it took 20 minutes, but... Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven, physical, literal kingdom, Okay? is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy, his enemy. Now, we know that during the kingdom of heaven, we know that during the kingdom of heaven, that Satan is going to be bound for a thousand years. But see, sin and evil are still present, even though Satan himself will be bound for a thousand years. That's a misconception that a lot of people get about the kingdom of heaven. That there ain't going to be no sin or evil because Satan is bound. Yes, he is. But man is evil. Man is sinful. And the kingdom of heaven is all works. Okay, you read the Sermon on the Mount, which, the king, which is for the kingdom of heaven. Okay, there's still going to be sin. There's still going to be wickedness and evil in men. Okay, during the kingdom of heaven. Yes, yes, okay. It's when the final dispensation, when Satan is let loose and then is cast into the lake of fire with all of you who want to follow him, okay? Cast into the lake of fire to burn for eternity in the lake of fire, okay? That is when evil is totally done away with. And hence the final dispensation of all seventh and final no sin okay so that's a misconception so many people stumble on that there ain't going to be no sin during the kingdom of heaven you're gravely mistaken and those are, and there are those out there who preach and give off hey you, you preach about you know how the kingdom of heaven is coming eventually tell us tell the people yeah there's going to still be sin and evil during the kingdom of heaven okay you got to remember that people you got to remember that. Evil does not be totally obliterated until after the great white throne of judgment. Okay? You got to remember that. So, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. Verse 25. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. Okay? 
went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence hast it, then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay. Nay. Lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together the fir first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. And people will stumble at this and try to tie this in to the redemption of the purchased possession. This has nothing to do with, the, uh, with today doctrinally. It has everything to do with the kingdom of heaven. Okay, there's going to be evil. There's going to be sin during the kingdom of heaven. Satan will be bound for a thousand years. Yes, but Satan's influence just... Remember how we talked about in the previous video about King Manasseh, okay? Even though King Manasseh himself, it was made right with the Lord is in heaven. That influence that he influenced the people with in his days when he was a, an, an enemy of the Lord, that stuck around and remained, okay? That stuck around and remain. So that influence, even though the, uh, Lucifer himself will be bound for a thousand years, that influence that he had on mankind will still be in there. you got to remember that. Okay? you got to remember that. But now look at verses 36 on verse 43 to explain this to you. Like I said, we have a video of the two raptures, which will be in the description box. If you have any questions about it, check out that video. Okay? Verses 36 on to verse 43 now. Then Jesus sent the multitude away, and went into the house. And his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said unto them, He that sowed the good seed is the Son of Man. Son of Man. Okay, who is that? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. Who's the wicked one? You kind of figured that out. Okay? The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. Okay? So what does that mean? What does that mean? You read in the scripture about how the Lord sends out his angels to get those people during the time of Jacob's trouble, pull them back, like get them to safety while the tares get burned, okay? The angels are those of us who went up at the redemption of the purchased possession. We come down with the Lord, okay? That's what that's talking about, all right? This has nada nothing to do with us today this has nothing to do with the redemption of the purchased possession that is coming sooner or later okay this has nothing to do with it okay this is all about future stuff okay don't get confused on this okay it's not for us today doctrinally you gotta rightly divide the word of truth my friend okay let's continue as therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire so shall it be in the end of this world the son of man shall send forth his angels send forth his angels that's us who go up with him okay and we come back down we will be likened on the angels remember john went to the one guy and went to worship him and the, the guy was like oh whoa, 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 hey dude see see i'll do it not okay i am of your i'm a fellow servant worship god not me okay <laughs> i'm like you i'm a servant okay that I believe that what John saw was uh, a, like one of us that went up, you know, and uh, who went up with him and came back down, who was as an angel, as one of the angels of heaven. Okay, that's what I believe. All right, but the point is, okay, the Son of Man shall send forth his angels. Those angels are us. 
He comes back down with us who went up with him. See? See how that works? We, the church of the living God, when we get redeemed, when we come back down, we're his army. Okay? We're his army. <laughs> All right? Okay? Son of man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity. Okay? All right? And shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Okay? All right? So, we come back with our Lord. Satan is bound for a thousand years. Okay? And during that thousand year time, um... Our Lord is going to establish the kingdom of heaven. But the evil in men is still there. And then at some point, Satan gets loosed. Loosed, excuse me. Uh, loosed uh, again. And goes out and deceives the nations. And he does it because there is already evil sown. Even though he himself was there. Was not there. Okay? Alright? Hence what we just read. Alright? All you need to remember, dear friend. That this is not doctrinal for us today. Okay? This is not doctrinal for us today. There is only one redemption of the purchased possession. The two witnesses, everybody sees them ascend up into heaven when you read Revelation chapter 11. Okay? Unlike the redemption of the purchased possession, it's in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, quicker than a blink, we're going to disappear. Okay? That's the redemption of the purchased possession. It's like, we're out of here. Boing! Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You could be, you know, when you lost people talking to someone of the church of the living God, and then all of a sudden you're like, whoa, where'd he go? It's that quick. It's that quick. What happens with Moses and Elijah, the people are like, get to see them ascend up to heaven. Because you got to remember, during the time of Jacob's trouble, it's faith and works, and the Jews require a sign. Signs are going to be there all over the place. Okay, fake sign signs and wonders from uh, the, tr the the Trinity, the Trinity. You know the the what is it? The devil, the beast, and the false prophet. Okay, because of the Trinity on the earth. Yes, uh, but actual signs from our Father and stuff like that, and from Moses and Elijah. Okay, they're going to be there too. All right, you got to remember that. But we looked at this specifically for, what was it, um, verse 28. He said unto them, an enemy hath done this. An enemy hath done this. Sown tares among the wheat. And see, when you take soldiers of the Vatican, People who are loyal to the Vatican first. Transplant them here in this nation. Hence, Sosa has an army here in America already. That if he were to call, they would spring into action. Just like that. These coadjutors that you see here on YouTube and do that, they work at the behest of their provincials. The people who tell them what to do. You're you're a dog, man. You're a dog. You can't you can't even do anything on your own because you follow orders, man. You follow orders from a devil. Yeah. Yeah, bravo to you. Bravo to you. But see, the sares, the tares among the wheat. But while men slept, verse 25, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. Also. Okay? And we see this today. We see this today. Okay? We see this today. And when you bring outside influence into a nation and plant them here, what happens? What happens? Due to the way that America is, uh, sooner or later, your God, marriages amongst people, you know, um, 
Ham marrying Shem, Shem marrying Japheth, okay? All right? And yes, I personally believe that Shem should stay with Shem, Japheth should stay with Japheth, and Ham should stay with Ham. God loves variety. People get a really too complex and too serious about that. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. I have seen, even King James Bible believing Christians, I have seen people who are like that, who's like, okay, Shem with Shem, Ham with Ham, Japheth with Japheth. They get too technical with it. They get so technical that they even border teeter-totter on the line of arguing about genealogies, which even easy believism devils would be like, hey, hey you did the, the, you're not supposed to do that. Okay? So yeah, we got to be aware of that. We have to be aware of that. Keep it simple. Shem with Shem. Ham with Ham. Japheth with Japheth. What is that? Japheth, the Europeans. Okay? Shem, the Asiatics, the Chinese, Japanese, the Hebrews came out of Shem, okay? The American Indians here that were on the continent that we, the white Japhethians, came and killed with our weapons and diseases, okay? Ham, the Africans, I believe the Aztec Indians because of the pyramids that they built, okay? Stay within your, stay within your kindreds like that. There's nothing wrong. That's not being racist. That's the way the Lord wants it. Okay? Variety. God loves variety. God loves variety. Or else why don't you and I look the same? God forbid, right? <laughs> right? Why, why aren't they all just one type of tree? Hey, you dog guys. Could you imagine what the world would be like if there were, uh, if we had dogs and they were only Chihuahuas? Uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. God loves variety. God loves variety. Now, see, people take that and just go in all kinds of crazy directions with that. All kinds of crazy directions with that. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Okay. It's when man gets involved, when this gets involved, okay? That's when the problems come, all right? But now, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. We're going to read verses 1 on to verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Now, like I told you at the beginning of this video, the context that we're going to be looking at in these verses does have to do with the fact of intermarrying. Okay, but why we are looking at this is the Vatican brings in their people into the midst of a nation that's supposedly Protestant. <laughs> okay, but yet they bring them in, all right, and people intermarry with them and they intermarry with others, but yet their loyalty is to first the Vatican, hence... Those people that have been sown by the Vatican in this nation through the immigration process, okay, um, can influence the nation. And hence, like I told you, that way Sosa has an army already in place in America. We have to, uh, we have to acknowledge that, people. You can't keep your head in the sand on this, or well, or else when it hits, you're going to be so blindsided, you're not even going to be able to get up to run out your door before they shoot you in the back. Okay? You have to be aware of this. Okay? And I, I'm talking about my nation. This is, this is for other nations as well. Okay? But I'm an American. Okay? But anyway, all right? Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 1 on verse 6. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it. This is for our instruction in righteousness, remember. And hast cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites and the Girgashites, Girgashites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor shew mercy unto them. 
Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. Why? Why? For they will turn away thy son from following me. That they may serve other gods, so will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. What was his name? Balaam, son of Pesor, who, you know, with the Moabitist women, okay? Read about that in Numbers and also that's made reference to in the book of Revelation. Okay? All right? You bring in an outside influence into the midst of the people. And that small number of people are very have very deep pockets coming from the Vatican. And yet, that small group, a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump, can influence the tide of a nation. Okay? All right? And this is what the Vatican has done from the beginning. Okay? And this is what they are continuing to do, continuing to do today as we speak. There is already an army loyal to Sosa in America that when, when Sosa makes the decree, that army that is in America, loyal to the Pope, the true Pope, Arturo Sosa, America's done for. And it's not going to be like this grandiose thing. It's going to be something subtle, you know? Something subtle, like, the, you know, they got, <laughs> can, can have a whole lot of fun with this one. They have the Kraken variant now, okay? They've never let that, they've never let that go away. That They're hanging on to that to maybe one day to bring that to the head again, to make everybody go back into their homes or whatever, whatever, okay? As far as I'm concerned, that would probably just be a declaration of war by the Vatican. Which basically this psychological operation was from the get-go. Okay? Alright? But, see, the outside influence can sway. And that's the point of why we're looking at this. And you got to remember, in the Old Testament, what was going on. Okay? The children of Israel are what we are today but in a different dispensation. The children of Israel were God's representative under the law. If someone wanted to be right with God, okay, the God of the scriptures, they had to go to the Hebrew. They had to go to the Jew. And the Hebrew came of Shem, not Ham. Okay? You had to go to the Hebrews. All right? You had to go to them because they were the uh, representatives of the true God. Under the law, okay? Under the law. All right? They were God's example. All right? Today, similar, we, the church of the living God, are that example made of Jews and Gentiles. Okay? That's how that works. So, them intermarrying with other people. Number one, it was, is it not evident that our Lord sprang from Judah? Hmm? Jesus Christ, dear, dear friend, Jesus Christ is a Jew. Jesus Christ is a Hebrew of Shem. Okay? Okay? Jesus Christ was not a black man. Jesus Christ was not a white man. Jesus Christ was a Shemitic Hebrew. And the Hebrews came from Shem. Okay? All right? Yeah, you, you got to remember that. All right? But part of the reason why, number one, for example, okay? Number two, because if they brought in uh, peoples of other uh, kindreds onto the children of Israel, what's the warning here? For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. But this, but thus 
shall ye deal with them. You shall destroy their altars and break down their images and cut down their groves and burn their graven images with fire. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. And that he was talking about the children of Israel, his ambassadors in that dispensation. Okay, his representative were the, you know, why do you think he was so harsh on them? Okay, why do you think he was? Because he chose Israel, the Hebraic people that came from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to be his ambassadors for that dispensation. You wanted to be right with God under the law, you had to go to the Hebraic Jew. Okay, today, you want to be right with God, you got to go to the Lord Jesus Christ and we'll tell you how to do it through the scriptures. Okay, that's how that works. But see, in this dispensation, the Jewish people did not know exactly where Jesus... They knew like he was going to be born in Bethlehem. They knew that, of the seed of David. But like when Jesus was right in front of them, okay? He even said, you know from where I'm at. It's like they can tra uh, trace genealogy, but they didn't know from where he was, see? Okay? See? And see, that intermingling played a part, obviously, in the Jewish people not accepting their king when he was first present. Okay, you got to remember that. The Messiah had yet to come. That was a major reason why the children of Israel were not to intermarry with other kindreds. Okay, and also too, we as the church of the living God, okay, we are in the world, but we are not of the world, okay? You're asking for trouble if someone who is saved marries someone who is lost. Okay? You are asking for trouble. You are asking for trouble. Okay? And, of course, you can go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. What fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? See? Okay? Alright? The Messiah was yet to come. That was one of the reasons why... Israel was not to intermarry. And also when they would intermarry with these other kindreds, what would happen? For they would turn away thy son from following me. Okay? And let's, let's get a really good example of this. Probably the best scriptural example that, I, that could be given to you that I can give you. Okay? You also read about this kind of thing in the book of Nehemiah and Ezra. Okay? The results of it. But... 1 Kings chapter 11. 1 Kings chapter 11 verses 1 on verse 8. But King Solomon loved many strange women. Strange, meaning not Hebraic women. Not women of the Hebrews. Okay? Together with the daughter of Pharaoh. Pharaoh. Egypt. Ham, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Moabites. Moabites came from the union of Lot and his daughters. Okay? Okay? Ammonites, Edomites, um, Jacob's brother. Okay? Zidonians and Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel... And this is in, I believe, the book of Exodus where it says this. Ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you. For surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon, clave unto these in love. It used to be when I would look at a, a Shemitic woman like a like a Chinese woman or a Japanese woman, be like, oh boy, oh boy. Even some, um, there are some hemetic women out there that are just like, wow, wow, right? I'm of Japheth. I'm of Japheth. I'm supposed to stay within Japheth, okay? But the same thing, you know? There are other, there are, there are beautiful, beautiful, 
um, people of, of the kindreds of Shem and of Ham. Beautiful. But see, that's how easy it is. Okay? When you see women of other kindreds of Shem or of Ham, it's like, oh, wow. Wow. But see, God loves variety. We are to remain in our own. Okay? All right? Like I said, a lot of people get that too crazy. Go a little too crazy with it. Keep it simple. But what happens with Solomon? He loved many strange women. How, well, Brad, how, does this, how does this have to do with immigration? What happens, you know, okay, Catholicism has invaded America for a long time through the immigration thing. How many people uh, I've, I've, I've heard, I've known of men who are like, well, I married a Catholic. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay? Get the people of other nations who are loyal to the Vatican here, intermingle them amongst the people, married, get them married off to others of other kindreds, hence their first loyalty is the Vatican. Okay? That's how it starts. And an army that will be loyal to Pope uh, Sosa or whatever the next black pope will be, uh, probably Sosa will be the last of the black popes, hopefully, praise the Lord. But um, that's how that works. And see this thing with immigration people. Okay? Is it, the, is it, the, is it like that with every immigrant? Of course not. But the vast majority of the people who are immigrating to America, and you got the Vatican smiling, come on in. And even with some of what the Vatican is able to do to circumvent some of these <laughs> safeguards, you know, the complex, um, frustrating process to actually become a legal citizen of this country, there are ways through political asylum that will um, speed up the process. Well, have, you, have you ever thought about why there are so many wars in other nations and then they come here to America with political asylum and they seem to get in rather more quickly than someone who just is in the wrong nation and ought to be here? <laughs> or vice versa? Okay? Have you ever wondered that? Hmm? Have you ever wondered that? Verse 4, oh, verse 3 in um, uh, 1 Kings 11. And he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. A thousand women at his, dis uh, at his disposal. People like, the, uh, what was that, that basketball player guy? Uh, uh, what, what, what was his name? Chamberlain. He said that he had slept with like a thousand women or something. Ah, uh, whatever, pal. Um, King Solomon had a thousand women who were loyal to him, who wouldn't go and play the harlot on him. But yet, what did they do? They turned away his heart. Turned away his heart. Why? Because he intermingled with... He got out of his kindred. Okay? Okay? And see, this is one of the purposes of the immigration that the Vatican is focusing on. You get these people who are loyal to the Vatican first, and you bring them in droves, intermingled with those who want to uh, legitimately, not looking to be war, uh, soldiers for the Vatican, but someone who comes from another nation, wants a better chance here, praise the Lord, okay? Good, good. Do what you got to do the right way. Come on, let's do this. But no, in that, the tears among the wheat, the coadjutors, and, and you got to remember too, brethren, remember at the end of World War II? Where did a lot of the Jesuits send the uh, Nazis? Here! America! Nazi scientists working for... You can check that out. I even think, uh, brother, um, a perfect standard KJV, I even think he has a couple of videos addressing that, I think. But what do they do? After World War II, right? Bring them here. Put them to work in the government, right? Right? Now, it wasn't just America, but America was a favorite place for these Nazis that the Jesuits hid and brought over here. Okay? And, of course, Nazis were Catholics. Okay? 
Nazitism or whatever was basically of the Jesuit order. Okay? All right? Okay, you see how this works? You see how this works? With a small... you have come to power with a small people. Okay? For it came to pass... When Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did David his father. Then did Solomon build a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, in the, in the hill that is before Jerusalem. And for Moloch, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. See, like I told you, you're bringing, bringing in of these Vatican agents within the mix of People who really want to get a new life going in here in America. You know, I don't know why, but looking in things in other parts of the world, it's understandable. But see, in that influx, the Vatican sows its tears among the wheat. And the time will come when Sosa will make a call. However it will be, however, whatever. And that army that has already invaded America and that controls this country already will rise up at the behest of Sosa. I believe that's going to happen. It's already happening and has happened. Okay? But sooner or later, we are going to see it on a grand scale. Okay? And this is why... Okay? Now, we're not talking about salvation. Salvation has nothing to do with kindred, nothing to do with anything except brokenness, contrition, and the fear of the Lord. Okay? Those are three requirements in order for you to be saved by our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Brokenness of your self-righteousness, contrition, manning up, taking responsibility for yourself and what you did to the Lord, how you put him on the cross, and you better, you better have the hell scared out of you by the Lord and call upon his name and he save you. Okay? Those are the conditions that, that transcends kindred, skin color, political agenda. Okay? We're not talking about that. All right? Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. Just one verse. Verse 26. Acts chapter 17, verse 26. And hath made of one blood all nations of men, for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times of before appointed and the bounds of their habitation, verse 27, that they, should, that they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from any, uh, any from, though he be not far from every one of us. And verse 28, for in him we live, yes, he gives everyone life, Okay? And move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Okay? Hath made of one blood. Yes, we all have man's blood living, dwelling within us. Okay? Yes. We all stem from Adam and Eve. Yes. Yes. But there are differences within that, which our Lord clearly likes or else you and i would look identical god have mercy <laughs> so what would happen if y'all look like me <laughs> or vice versa right yeah god likes variety god likes distinction satan wants to bring everybody together and blur that distinction and we are at a point now where that it has been so watered down. It has been so intermingled that the only one who's going to be able to rectify any of this 
is the Lord himself, Jesus Christ, God our Father. It's gotten, it, we as man, we cannot rectify this. Okay? You can do your own little part for your own little thing that the Lord has you doing. Great praise the Lord. But on a bigger scale, it's, it, it, it's, it's past the point of no return. Okay? The most we can do is warn people. It's like, hey, you know. And, you, you know, you don't hate other, I mean, the, the, hating other people of, of, that uh, have a different skin color than you. I've never understood it. I've never understood it. Okay? We're different. Okay? We're both men. But I'm of Ham. I'm of, of Japheth. You're of Ham. I'm of Japheth. You're of Shem. Okay? And that we're different. In salvation, if you're truly saved, we are one in Christ Jesus. That goes out the window. Okay? But there are differences. And that's the way God wants it. Okay? Satan is the one that wants to bring everybody together because as we have seen in Genesis chapter 11, when everybody gets together, they build towers to reach on the heaven, calling themselves gods. And they can, and when men get together, nothing that they, nothing that is going to be, uh, stop them from the wicked imaginations that they imagine. Like cutting open some guy's vocal cord box and manipulating his vocal cords as if they're tuning a guitar. It's man for you. But Deuteronomy chapter 32, just, just one verse, again, verse 8. Okay? Uh, verses 7 and 8. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will shew thee. Thy elders, and they will tell thee. When the Most High divided the nations, their inheritance, and when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. And verse 9, for the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance, okay? The Jews, the Hebrews, okay? So there is this scriptural, and you saw that in the book of Acts, for this dispensation, okay? All right? We have to remember, though, because of what the Vatican has done to this nation, it, it's, 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 it, cannot be, it cannot be rectified. It cannot be rectified. Be aware of what has happened. So when the hammer comes crashing down. See, and that's going to be the thing. See, brethren, at this point, you and I are there to, to, for accountability. Okay? A lot of the tracks that um, I give out are for accountability. Okay? They are. Because... What's going to happen is when the redemption of the purchase possession happens, that is going to be an earth-changing event. Everything changes. Your life as you think you know it is going to change like that when we be redeemed. Everything changes. You, you realize that? Once we, the church of the living God, get redeemed, caught up, everything changes just like that. Because this dispensation will be over. And hence the time of Jacob's trouble begins. Seven years of God's wrath on this earth. And during that dispensation, it's faith and works, not like it is today. Okay? Uh, uh, I, I beg your pardon, brethren. I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. I didn't, uh, uh, didn't silence my phone. Sorry about that. Okay? But everything is going to change when we get redeemed. And so many people are going to be caught off guard. And when what happens when you're caught off guard is when your enemy can do the most damage to you. It's for accountability. And let's look a little at the enemies who are doing this. Okay? Now, a link for this is on the channel here. Okay? But this is part of the Jesuit Extreme Oath. All right? And I, I've read this before, but I'm going to read this. If you want, a li uh, links will be in the description box. This is something that you need to consider. You need to take this seriously. Because mo when we get redeemed, those of you who get left behind, you're going to be blindsided. 
don't want you to be blindsided by this. Okay? I don't want you to have your head in the sand. You need to be you need to wake up to what has happened, what they are doing. Okay? This is part of the Jesuit oath. The extreme oath. Or the um, the blood oath, as it's sometimes called. These are the types of people. This is the mentality that is driving the push of Roman Catholic immigrants into this nation to be a future army for the Pope Arturo Sosa. Never mind Francis. He, he works for Sosa. He works for Sosa. They even joked about it. That uh, uh, somebody uh, in a comment asked, uh, well, is, well, who, I forget what it was. Uh, yeah, it was a little girl asked the, uh, the black pope in an interview. That's, uh, that's on the channel, too. Um, are you Francis's boss? And he's like, <laughs> yes, he is. Arturo Sosa, the black pope, is the boss of Pope Francis. Francis is a Jesuit. A Jesuit is subservient unto their master, the head Jesuit, especially Sosa. That's why these coadjutors who work for the Vatican are to be pitied the most. Because you got to do what your master tell you, boy! And your master is not God, even though you think he is and trained to look at him as. But this is what is behind the migrant push. My son... Heretofore you have been taught to act a dissembler among Roman Catholics to be a Roman Catholic and to be a spy even among your own brethren, to believe no man, to trust no man, among the reformers to be a reformer, among the Huguenots to be a Huguenot, among the Calvinists to be a Calvinist, among other Protestants generally to be a Protestant and obtaining their confidence to seek even to preach from their pulpits and to denounce with all the vehemence in your nature our holy religion and the Pope, and even to descend so low as to become a Jew among Jews, that you might be enabled to gather together all information for the benefit of your order as a faithful soldier of the Pope. So, and you read, and you can read about this in Brother Alberto Rivera's testimony about how the Jesuits infiltrate to gain the confidence, and also James Atkin Weil, uh, White, excuse me, or whatever. He also talks about how they are. A Jesuit could be pumping your gas, a Jesuit could be flipping your burger. Very well could have a Jesuit priest uh, as a homeless person. A loyal. Vatican agents. Okay? Loyal Vatican agents. Someone is a Catholic. Their first loyalty is to Rome. The Pope. Sosa. Okay? Their God. That's their first loyalty. We talk about that in the disloyalty video of the Catholic. Okay? Uh, Catholic disloyalty. Okay? They're loyal to Rome first. And in all this immigration stuff that is coming right now, okay, the Hispanics, there are many Roman Catholic Hispanics who are first loyal to the Vatican, okay? All right? Also from other nations, all right? All right? You have to be aware of this. This is how the Vatican defeated America without firing a shot. Get them in, unawares, all right? You have been taught to insidiously plant the seeds of jealousy and hatred to, between communities, and that's what they do, provinces, states that were at peace, and incite them to deeds of blood, involving them in war with each other, and to create revolutions and civil wars in countries that were independent and prosperous, cultivating the arts and the sciences, and enjoying the blessings of peace. Hmm. The ones who cause the wars will have peace. Employing what? The arts and the sciences. The art of theater and science so falsely called. Yeah, the theater, the political stuff that we are going to be seeing, especially in the news, and science falsely so called. The steel of the Jesuit poniard. And <laughs> the Kraken virus. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. It's not funny, but just oh, I think about some a certain individual, the Kraken virus. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, we're gonna have a lot of fun with that. But anyway, involving them. Okay, we already read that. To take sides with the combatants and to act secretly with your brother Jesuit, who might be engaged on the other side. The Hegelian principle: work both sides of the argument to control the outcome of the argument. Okay, the Hegelian principle. All right. But openly opposed to that which, you, with which you might be connected, only that the church might be the gainer in the end, in the conditions fixed in the treaties for peace, and that the end justifies the means. And you even read in the um, the Vatican's uh, what is that um, Ducat or Ucat Catechism? They plainly say the ends don't justify the means, but that's that's the policy of Rome what you just read, okay? These are the types of agents. This is the type of mind that have sent these people through this immigration thing into this nation, and we have this army of loyal Catholics in this nation who, when, when Arturo Sosa make the call, they'll rise up. I believe it's going to have to do something with uh, Trump because I believe that the Jesuits are going to use Donald Trump as they used Napoleon Bonaparte, okay, to sacrifice his countrymen. Now, is that going to be an actual literal sacrifice like as Waterloo? I hope not. But Trump is there to draw away these uh, American countrymen of mine who are want uh, America great again, and they're going to be sacrificed on the altar for Trump. Because of Trump, I should say. Yeah. You have been taught your duty as a spy to gather all statistics, facts, and information in your power from every source to ingratiate yourself into the confidences of the family circle of Protestants and heretics of every class and character, as well as that of the merchant the banker, the lawyer among the schools and universities in parliaments and legislatures and the judiciaries and councils of state and to be all things to all men for the Pope's sake, whose servants we are unto death. And that's the black Pope that he's talking about there. Okay, well, when this was written, or well, whatever, okay? That's how it works. This army has infiltrated America and people have made marriages into it, okay? But see, that's, that's how it works. That's why we looked at this. This is the danger of the immigration thing, okay? Hey, you want to become a citizen of America? Great. Do it the right way. Yes, it's expensive. Yes, it's complex. Use political asylum. Oh, you come from, you come from Ukraine? Hmm. Political asylum? Think about it. A Ukrainian immigrant coming from Ukraine today to America with political asylum, that, that, that dude or woman or family probably get in here right away. Probably. Okay? Probably. Yes, and we will not read the rest of this. Uh, like I said, the link for this will be in the description box. A link for this is on the channel even. Okay? It's on the channel even. But now I want us to get to this video. Now, uh, bear with me here, okay? Bear with me here because I have today just figured out, okay, this is going to go away for a second, okay? Okay, get rid of that. Hold on now. All right, you can still hear me. Go. Yeah, yeah, finally. <laughs> hey, my brother from Croatia, I finally figured this out. <laughs> okay, put that back there again so you can see my shining face, okay? Boom, there I am. <laughs> I figured out the scene thing. Figured out the scene. What are you doing? Figured this out finally. Okay, put that over there. Now, we... This, this video was sent to me by a brother, my best friend, and it's about immigration. Bishop takes lead in Catholic migraine, migrant ministry. And the, this Jesuit priest, 
here that you see. I, I have to bring this up. I, I have got to bring this up. I used to be a sodomite. Okay? Um, I'm no longer a sodomite. The Lord rescued me from that. Okay? The very first time I heard and saw Stephen Anderson, the very first time, it's like, that guy's a sodomite. Yeah. Yeah. Stephen Anderson. If you don't know who he is, keep it that way. Those of you who know who he is, that guy's a sodomite. You can't, that guy's a sodomite. Okay. I am out of that neighborhood, but when you see traits of that neighborhood, it's like, dude, that guy's, yeah, Stephen Anderson. I, I, from the very first time I saw that guy, it's like, right away, it's like, Whoa, wait a minute. You, you, you're not safe. You're, you're a sodomite still in it, ain't you? He sure is. This <laughs> Jesuit priest guy, the, the, this guy, he, he's the lost relative of the village people. Okay? He really is. But we're, this is a very short video. This is a very short video. And let the video speak for itself, okay? Check this out. Check this out. This is from the Associated Press. And this was seven days ago. Uh, a channel that has two million subscribers. And this only got not even a third of the views. Wow. I wonder why. This is one of these things that the Vatican does that is hush-hush. This is a facility that is our largest hall. We use it normally for education, adult education primarily, but and also for day retreats and things like that. But now it's um, home away from home for people on the move. Immigrants have so much to teach us because of their journey. You know, for we Christians look at... We Christians. We Christians. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. See, he's a Christian. Come on. This guy ought to be with the village people. It's like right away. Come on, dude. This, this Catholic priest guy, come on. Come on. This guy's a sodomite. Brad, you can come. Come on. Come on. But anyway, we as Christians, huh? Yeah. This is why I'm not a Christian. All of life as a journey, right? We're going from this world, we hope, to the next. Immigrants have had the experience of, of leaving everything that helped them to feel uh, at home and secure in this life behind and to depend utterly on God. Uh, as Depend utterly on God, huh? Hmm. The God that uh, Catholics are pushing, which is Satan. Now see, a lot of these people may in fact be innocent, absolutely. But see, within this, you have the Vatican. And within this number, there are what? Agents. You get a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump, people. Okay? A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Okay? This is how this works. Within this thing of immigrants, of this migrating thing, okay? Within that, there are tares among the wheat. And those tares are the soldiers of the Vatican. And come in and just make it worse for the things that are already here, okay? They journey. So they come... So many of the bishops have come up to me and expressed their concern about the reception of people here in this country, uh, concern about how we need to do better to, to welcome them. These are, by definition, not the kind of people who can make an application and wait five years to be able to cross. So we need to get them in here now. 
now. And see, that's part of the process. It's a long process. It's frustrating. It's complex to be legal. Yes, it is. But see, the means that the Vatican is doing it, we need to get them in here now. Now, 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 without thinking about it. How many of their agents have they gotten in here to leaven the whole lump? And they've done that since the inception of America, people. There are people who are in urgent need. The church had an important role to play in this. Uh, we have... <laughs> sure does. Yeah, he's... See, he's brazenly rubbing it in the face. Okay? And they're, they're pulling at your heartstrings with the mothers and the children. Yes! Yes, that, that's horrible. But see, the Vatican is using that to bring in their agents. Okay? There is a Catholic army that is murmuring, simmering, brooding to eventually rise up. And when that happens... Most of America is going to be blindsided because they've lulled you to sleep with the television and the TVs and the stimuli, okay? Have a system of churches with halls and, and the like that... <laughs> look, at, look, at <laughs> look at this guy. Look at this guy. Uh, this guy's a lost relative to the village people. You make it obvious there, pal. Uh, some of them can rather easily be adapted to sheltering needs. And uh, as people who have been called by, by Jesus and the gospel to serve those who are poor, but to welcome the stranger, to clothe the naked, feed the hungry. Uh, this sounds like it's right, down, right up our alley. And of course he's right about the one thing, about how we who are of the Church of the Living God, we are to do that, to uh, help, the, help those who are in need. Yes, we are. But see, the way, what they're doing, they're bringing in their agents. That's what they're doing, okay? Now, oh, one moment here, brethren. One moment, bear with me. All right. Now we finish this up on the regular camera. See, we as the Church of the Living God, yes, we are to help those who are in need. Yes, we are to be the ones. And a brother, a brother in an email, and this, this video will be coming soon, brother. But a brother in an email, and I, we kind of talked about this. It's like, yes, you know, we are to be there to help people if we are able. You know, yes, we are. But see what the Vatican is doing, okay? Here's one of the resources I'm, I'm going to read for, uh, re share with you. The link for this called Catholic Confidential will also be in the description box for you. Um, this, I believe, is a Hebrew Roots Movement uh, thing, but the resources on... The Jesuits that they give is second to none. They even have their own video out, um, Jesuit Secrets Revealed, where they read word for word this, some of the stuff that I'm going to read you, okay? But quoting a little of Samuel Morse here. The Jesuits, they are Jesuits. The Society of Men, after exerting their tyranny for upwards of 200 years, at length became so formidable to the world, threatening the entire subversion of all social order, that even the Pope, whose devoted subjects they are and must be by the vow of their society, was compelled to dissolve them. They had not been suppressed, however, for 50 years before the waning influence of popery and despotism required their useful labors. To resist the light of democratic liberty and the Pope, Pius the what, five, six, seventh, uh, simultaneously with the formation of the Holy Alliance, revived the order of the Jesuits in all their power from 
their vow of unqualified submission to the sovereign pontiff, the what we looked at, okay, a portion of, they have been appropriately called the Pope's bodyguard. And do Americans need to be told what Jesuits are? Yes! Yes! You know what a Jesuit is? No. Or you know what a Jesuit is? Yeah, they're like they're like monks, uh, 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 an order of Catholicism. Okay, that's a good start. Do you know what they're about? No. Most people don't. Most people don't. And a tactic, and, and I find this really interesting. Uh, there's this one provincial guy from England who, provincial, okay, not a dog licking his foot. But there's this provincial from England who, who in several videos, talked about, you know, calling everybody a Jesuit and you shouldn't spend too much time thinking about the Jesuits. Well, yeah, this can consume you, but he was doing it more of a deflection because he is a Jesuit himself. And not only is he a Jesuit, but he is a provincial. Yeah, one of the head guys, okay? So, uh, to, it's see, enemies of the Lord Jesus Christ want nothing more than to distract you from going after the head of the serpent, which is Catholicism. And they give you all these little pieces of this body of the snake to be concerned with. You go for the head, Jack. Okay, that's, that's go for the head. Roman Catholicism, okay? And do Americans need to be told what Jesuits are? Yes. They are a secret society, a sort of Masonic order with super... Super added features of revolting odiousness and a thousand times more dangerous. Absolutely they are. They are not merely priests or of one religious creed. They are merchants and lawyers and editors and men of any profession having no outward baggage in this country by which to be recognized. They are, ab they are about in all your society. And they're being brought in by truckloads now uh, via these the immigration. They can assume any character. And I've seen this. I've seen this. Yeah. They can assume any character. That of angels of light or ministers of darkness to accomplish their one great end, the service upon which they are sent, whatever that service may be. They are all educated men. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Prepared and sworn to start at any moment and in any direction and for any service. Commanded by the general of their order, bound to no family, community, or country, but by the ordinary ties which bind men and sold for life to the cause of the Roman pontiff. And who is that? That's Arturo Sosa. I'm going to read to you a little from this, from Samuel Morris, his own, his, his own book that he has. His own book that he has. <clears throat> All right, and we are going to read just a portion, a couple portions of this. All right. Going to read this part right here to where my finger is, okay? All right, here, right here where my fingers are, right here, this part, and that part right there. Go ahead and pause it and read it if you can. <clears throat> and who are these agents? They are, for the most part, Jesuits. An ecclesiastical order proverbial through the world for cunning, duplicity, and total want of moral principle. An order so skilled in all the arts of deception. Oh, and these people who work for the Vatican, who are very skillful. I know of another Englishman, so-called, who is very skillful, very good at deception, very good. He, he is an expert at deception. Got to give him that credit. <laughs> quite a thing to be credited for. But he is uh, quite, quite the deceiver. Quite the deceiver. 
<clears throat> yeah, an order so skilled in all the arts of deception that even in Catholic countries, in Italy itself, it became intolerable. And the people required its suppression. But see, today, the people don't require the suppression of the uh, Jesuits because they don't know. They don't want to know. America is the model. Conjure magic for us. We'll be distracted. Take away their freedom and instill their sports entertainment. The bleeding heart of America is not the Masonic Constitution, but the television, the internet, from whence you learn the facts of life. See, the Jesuits have given us here in America death through entertainment, sexuality through entertainment, through TV and internet. My American people love the Jesuits for it. Prove me wrong. Please, please, please prove me wrong. They are Jesuits in, they are Jesuits in the pay and employ of a despotic government who are at work who are at work on the ignorance and passions of our community. What well, I just said. There are foreigners who have been schooled in foreign seminaries in the doctrine of passive obedience. They are foreigners under vows of perpetual celibacy and having therefore no deep and permanent interest in this country. There are foreigners bound by the strong ties of pecuniary pecuniary interest and ambition to the service of a foreign despot, Arturo Sosa, the Black Pope. Is there no danger to our free institutions from a host commanded by such men, whose numbers are constantly increasing by the machinations and funds of Austria? This was written at the, at the Unholy Alliance. This is a dated piece of work. But there again, these people coming from other nations, some legitimate, yes, but woven in there are these agents of the Vatican. And what are they doing? They're doing exactly this, overtaking our enterprise. Hmm? There is legitimacy to that part of it, okay? Um, an immigrant will work cheaper than an American citizen. That is true. Uh, I used to work in the food industry. Um, I had seen, with these two eyes, working in a restaurant, where an immigration officer came in and several Hispanic people literally bolted out of the place because th that's true. That is true. People like to make jokes about that. They make a stereotype of that. I have seen that with my eyes. I have seen that. I have seen it. At work, when I was in kitchens and stuff, I saw that. An immigration officer was there. It was known that he was an immigration officer. I saw it. Six of them, six people, bolted out of the restaurant. Okay? I've seen that. That, that happens. Okay? That is, I, I've seen that. That happens. Okay, I've seen it. All right? But yes, a stranger in this nation would gladly do, like, yeah, like you, you, my fellow countrymen, would stand on a corner selling oranges out of a bag. Like you would do that, right? No, you got your Jesuit degrees and you want your six-figure salary. You see, how, you see how they, the Jesuits, have set it up for our destruction. Consider, too, the power with which these Jesuits and other Catholic priests possess through the confessional. Yeah. 
of knowing the private characters and affairs of all the leading men in the community, the power arising from their right to prescribe the kinds and degrees of penance, and the power arising from the right to refuse absolution to those who do not comply with their commands. Suppose such powers were exercised by the ministers of any other sect, the Episcopalian. Think about that, yeah. The Methodist, the Presbyterian, the Baptist, etc. What an outcry would be raised in the land. And should not the men who possess such powers be jealously watched by all lovers of liberty? No. No. What happened? They're watching their football. They're watching their hockey. They're watching their professional wrestling. They're watching pornography. They're watching feminazi uh, television shows. Hmm. They live, the Jesuits, while you sleep. Now, also, uh, Mr. Samuel Morse talked about how our political system works against us and how the Jesuits, like you just saw in that video, use it to their advantage to get their soldiers into this country. Okay? And this has worked since virtually the beginning. Like I said, you have the state, one of the 13 original states of America, Mary's land. We're done. It's done. We were, we, were, we were done. America was doomed before she even began. Okay? Mary land. Okay? All right? America was doomed. There's no returning to America. There's no... Uh, America was never a godly nation, people. The church of the living God within America, that's a different story, yes. But America was never a godly nation. Never. Never. Never a godly nation. Never. No, not once. But, well, I want us to uh, consider this about the weakness of our system here in America. And this is in, here I'm going to read this little quote for you right here. That's in yellow, if you can pause that and read it. Consider some of the points in our political system of which advantage has already been taken to attack us by the wily enemies of our liberties. All right. All right. We're going to read now the rest of this where my finger is, right here, down, okay? And then we are going to read up to where my finger is on this top section, okay? It is a beautiful feature in our Constitution that every man is left to worship God according to the dictates of his own conscience, that the church is separated from the state, and that equal protection is granted to all creeds. That's a mistake. <gasps> you start giving way to the devil and the Vatican. Here's America. Here's America. You know, uh, what was it, Massachusetts? I think it was. Don't quote me on that. Uh, but, what, you know, some of the original 13 states. Were, uh, no Catholics. No Catholics. Well, Brad, that's discre... Yes, it is! I hate Rome. I hate Catholicism. It's false. You ought to as well. Because it's Rome, that it's Catholicism, it's the Jesuit order that destroyed this nation. Okay? And why? Because we allowed it. And one of the things that grieves me the most, people who purport to be enemies of Rome will yet defend the things that are near and dear to the Catholic such as certain holy days. 
that 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 one yeah it, it'd be hard it's hard for me to take someone serious as they call themselves an enemy of Rome when they make such a stink about one day in a year and your god-given right to do it when it comes from Rome itself you know yeah yeah but that never mind that in thus tolerating all sex s e c t s we have admitted to equal protection not only those sects whose religious faith and practice support the principle on which the free toleration of all is founded, but also that unique, that solitary sect, the Catholic, which builds and supports its system on the destruction of toleration. Yes, the Catholic is permitted to work in the light of Protestant toleration, to mature his plans and to execute his designs to extinguish that light and destroy the hand that holds it. And he's right. You're seeing the fruit of it today. Even uh, in the book by uh, Leone, um, there's a quote in there where even the Jesuits are like, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're letting us in to, to do this so we can do this to them. Not the brightest of people. Even the Jesuits will say that of us. Americans. You know. Where other nations had them expelled. Wouldn't happen today. You know, that's why, that's why when you see these, these idiots. Like uh, uh, Philip Robertson. And these other guys who. It's like, America, come, America has, is gone. Okay. Until you start dealing with the reality of the Jesuit order, nothing can happen and nothing will happen. Because why? They all glazed over with their entertainment. Okay. There was a, there was a, okay. There was, ah, yeah, here's another one. Here's another one. Uh, we're going to read, um, going to read actually quite a bit here. We're going to read from here down up to where my finger is on this page. Okay? So here. Here you go. If you can, pause it and read it. We're going to read down from right here down and on this page to where my finger is. If you can, pause it and read it. Catholics have boasted that they can play off one sect against another, the Hegelian principle. For in the petty controversies that divide the contend contending parties, the pliable conscience of the Jesuit enables him to throw the weight of his influence on either side. You said that's what they did uh, during the Civil War. Okay? The Civil War is a good example about how the Jesuits used uh, Americans against Americans to just kill people. Similar to what they're going to do with Trump. As his interest may be, the command of his superiors and the alleged, alleged good of the church, that is the power of the priesthood, being paramount to all other considerations. This pliability of conscience, so advantageous to building up and, and to building up any system of oppression, religious or political, present, presents us with strangely contradictory alliances. In Europe, popery support, supports the most high-handed despotism, lends its thunders to all the people into the most abject obedience, lying signs and wonders. Basically what we got here in America with people being lulled to sleep with television and internet and all that stuff, okay? And maintains at the top of its creed the indissolvable union of church and state. Well, in this country, where it is yet feeling its way, oh how consistent, it has allied itself with the democracy of the land. It is loudest in its denunciations of tyranny, the tyranny of American patriots. It is first to it is first to send out, S C E N T out oppression, 
sees afar off the machinations of the Native American uh, Protestants to unite church and state, and puts itself forth the most zealous guardian of civil and religious liberty. With such sentinels, surely our liberties are safe. With such guardians of our rights, we may keep, we may sleep on in peace. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, but see, those blockers or whatever this guy's talking about, Samuel Morris, aren't there today. They're there in the opposite end to silence those who want to warn people about this. Another weak point in our system is our laws concerning immigration and affording facilities to naturalization. In the early state of the country, liberality in these points was thought to be of an advan of advantage as it promoted the cultivization, cultivization of our wild land, but the dangers which now threaten our free institutions from this source more than balance all advantages of this character. Amen! Amen! The harm that it's doing to this nation far outweighs any of the good that it can do now. It surely does. It surely does. It surely does. The great body of immigrants to this country are hardworking, mentally ne ne neglected poor of Catholic countries in Europe. who left a land where they were enslaved for one of freedom. However well disposed they may be to the country which protects them and adopts them as citizens. They are not fitted to act with judgment in the political affairs of their new country like native citizens. Educated from their infancy in the principles and habits of our institutions, most of them are too ignorant to act at all for themselves and accept to be guided wholly by others. Now, this has uh, this you got to remember when Samuel Mort Morris wrote this, there was still some integrity in America. There was still some integrity in America when he wrote this. Nowadays, 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 these immigrants are not as ignorant. Um, I have actually found it in my own experience how much more of the system, um, like the, the, the one, um, one uh, nice hermetic lady um, knew how to get around the system so she could stay here more than a citizen of the country. She learned how to make the American system fight for her, see. So that ignorance that this man was talking about is no longer there, but has been reversed, okay? Remember, this is a dated work with very relevant stuff for us today, but stuff that isn't, okay? Because this was written over 100 years ago, okay? Over 100. Uh, the Titanic, uh, I believe the Titanic had just sunk or was uh, soon to be sunk by the Jesuits by the time this came out, okay? One of the two, okay? That tells you the time of it. These others are, of course, they're priests. Like that village people twit that we saw in that video. Priests have ruled them at home by divine right. Their ignorant minds cannot ordinarily be emancipated from their habitual subjection. They will not learn nor appreciate their exemption from any such usurpation of priestly power in this country. And they are implicitly at the beck of their spiritual guides. Yeah, especially when the first thing they see when they come to this country is that village people, Jesuit priests like that. Yeah. Yeah. When we have the Church of the Living God, sure. We're in such a place, absolutely. But what are these people seeing more so of? They're Jesuit priests. They live surrounded by freedom. 
Yet liberty of conscience, right of private judgment, whether in religious, religion or politics, are as effectually excluded by the priests as if the code of Austria already ruled the land. The for, they form a body of men whose habits of action, for I cannot say thought, are opposed to the principles of our free institutions. For as they are not accessible to the reasonings of the press, they cannot and do not think for themselves. Just like the Jesuit. Just like the Jesuit. Oh, they, they, they have limited thinkings for themselves, but these coadjutors, they got to do what they're told. They're little uh, provincials pulling the strings for them. Okay? Okay? Now go to Deuteronomy chapter 13. Deuteronomy chapter 13. And see what happens. They bring in these armies of Jesuits, these Catholics, loyal first to the Vatican. Okay? Loyal first to the Vatican. Deuteronomy chapter 13, verses 6 on to verse 15. Right? Right. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul, entice thee secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other gods, which thou hast not known, thou nor thy fathers. Namely, of the gods of the people which are round about you, nigh unto thee, or far off from thee, from the one end of the earth, even on to the other end of the earth. Dream catchers. American Indian culture. I've seen people who have, my wife used to be, really be into the dream catcher for the Lord saved her. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, learning the ways of the heathen. Okay? Thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him. Neither shall thine eye pity him, neither shalt thou spare, neither shalt thou conceal him. But thou shalt surely kill him. Thine hand shall be first upon him to put him to death, and afterward the hand of all the people. Now, this is a this we don't do this today. Why? Because every one of us is going to give an account of himself to God. Okay? That is why. This is a different dispensation where the seal, that circumcision made without hands, wasn't there. The circumcision made without hands is the seal of our Lord Jesus Christ, God Himself, living within the believer permanently, once saved, always saved. In this dispensation, the dispensation of the law, that permanent seal was not there. God could indwell someone, but he can come and go, come and go. Okay? That permanent seal, once saved, always saved, was not in this dispensation. You have to remember that. You have to remember that. Okay? A body and soul were connected because that, that circumcision made without hands wasn't there permanently. Okay? You have to remember that. You have to rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. Okay? But that is why. Okay? We don't do this today, actually. Why? Because God is the one who's going to, unto me, vengeance belongeth. Okay? That's why we don't do that today. Okay? All right? It would be messy if it would. Thou shalt stone him with stones that he die, because he has sought to thrust thee away from the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Well, what does this have to do with immigration? Make a friend of someone who is a, a closet Catholic, okay, whose first loyalty is the Vatican, okay? You meet a fine woman of another nation, okay? You decide to get married, and lo and behold, she turns out to be a Vatic uh, Vatican agent hmm? and turns your heart away from uh, ever going after the Lord. You see how that works? See, you get the enemy in behind enemy lines, intermingle with them as their own, even for years. And then at any given moment, called on like that by their superior, their general or whatever. And then it starts. Thou shalt stone him with stones that he die, because he hath sought to thrust thee away from the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. And all Israel shall hear and fear, and shall do no more any 
such wickedness as this is among you. If thou shalt hear say in one of thy cities, which the Lord thy God hath given thee to dwell there, saying, Certain men, the children of Belial, are gone out from among you, and have withdrawn the inhabitants of their cities, saying, Let us go and serve other gods which ye have not known. Then shalt thou inquire, and make search, and ask diligently, and behold, if it be truth, and the thing certain, that such abomination is wrought among you. Thou shalt surely smite the inhabitants of that city with the edge of the sword, destroying it utterly, and all that is therein, and the cattle thereof with the edge of the sword. Okay? That's what they were supposed to do in the Old Testament. We don't do that today because vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. He did that in this dispensation of the law through Israel. Okay, He's going to do it himself eventually. That's why we don't do it. Because Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scripture. The atonement, the atonement for sin was made on the cross. Okay? When someone is saved, they're sealed. Once saved, always saved. That circumcision made without hands is there. God permanently dwelling within the believer. Okay, That is the big difference between the dispensations. That's why we're not going killing people today. Okay, okay? But the point is, you get an army of Catholics, Jesuit coadjutors, into a nation, intermingle them. People make marriages onto them. They get involved in the government. They sell you your food. Okay? All right? Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. Uh, again, I am not against immigration and itself. Uh, if you want to come to this nation, do it the right way. It takes a long time. It's frustrating. It's expensive. It's complex. Yes. But what happens? Political asylum. Like you saw that village people priest talk about. You know? They have need. We need them right now. Kind of like what they did with the steel of the Jesuit poniard. And you see healthy people uh, having heart attacks. Apparent healthy people having heart attacks all of a sudden because of it. You know? It's like, Really? Really? Yeah. Yeah, and that's something. Yeah. We have to do it now, 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 without thinking ahead. It's like, well, what's going to be the drawback if we do this all quickly without giving them this time to do it the right way? Okay? All right? Galatians chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. And that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. Well, we're, we're Christians too, like that uh, uh, village people priest said. Okay? We as Christians. I'm not a Christian. I'm not a Christian. I'm of the Church of God, Church of the Living God. There's a difference. There's a big difference. Okay? To whom we gave place by subjection. No, not for an hour truth of the gospel might continue with you. You also read about this in Nehemiah. It's like, well, we seek your God just like you do. And they're like, you have no part with us. Go away. And what happens? They go against the builders of the temple or builders of the wall. Excuse me. Okay. They try to infiltrate and then they're like, no, you have no part. Go away. We got this. Thank you. Bless your heart. Uh, but no, thank you. No, thank you. Go away. What happens? They turn and rend them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, 1 Timothy chapter 5. 1 Timothy chapter 5. Verses 22 on to verse 25. Lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be partaker of other men's sins. Keep thyself pure. Drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake, and thine often infirmities. Some men's sins are open beforehand, going before judgment, and some men they follow after. You know, there are some out there who can, are really good at keeping up their facade as if they are a harmless, gentle, polite Christian. Yeah. 
can't keep it up forever. They, they always shoot themselves in the foot sooner or later. They always do. Okay? And also, though, likewise also the good works of some are manifest beforehand, and they that are otherwise cannot be hid. You shall know them by their fruits. Think about that. Think about that. When it comes to this, like I said, there are people who are coming here in droves because of the wars and stuff like that. Amen, amen. And it should probably be a lot less complicated. Okay, but see, because of what Mr. Morris even touched on, the system that we have works against us. And at one point, it was a good thing for the nation, but now, because of the more harm it does in bringing in these Vatican agents, it's destroyed our nation. Hey, there's no hope for America, okay? What you're seeing is a pipe dream fed to you by television and internet and advertisements and whatever. It's a pipe dream. Your vote means nothing. You have no choice in that sphere of operations here in this country. You don't have a choice. It's theater. It's theater. And you're being lulled to sleep by the television, by the news. And see, like I told you, when Sosa makes that move, whenever that comes, whenever that comes, and the Jesuits call on their hidden army within America to rise up, which they already have, America was long ago invaded by a foreign army. Even, even at the inception with the original 13 states, with one of them being Mary's land, Maryland. We were done, we were done even before we began, brethren. We were done even before we were began. And so many of you are going to be blindsided by this. That's the point of this. That's the point of this. Because just a couple of uh, verses in Daniel. And you got to remember Daniel is specifically talking about that man of sin. The son of perdition and things pertinent for a time. Which you and I are not going to be here for. But one verse in Daniel chapter 8 verse 25. <laughs> And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. And he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the princes of prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. And through his craft, this is talking about the son of perdition, okay? But the point is, through his craft shall he cause... Through his policy, he shall cause craft to pros prosper. Oh, which craft? Craft is Masonic also. That's what the Masons are doing. They're uh, perfecting their craft to build up for their afterlife or some to get to heaven or whatever. Whatever, okay? And through peace, what does that say? And by peace, destroy many. Through peace. In the name of peace, he's going to go forth conquering and to conquer that man of sin, the son of perdition. And you think about today through peace. Peace. Look what they've done to America. And also one more of the verse here in Daniel chapter 11, verse 23. Mm. And this one. Now you got to remember, what we're looking at in Daniel does not apply for us today, but it's about what will be coming pertaining to that man of sin, the son of perdition. I just found these very pertinent on the subject. Verse 23, And after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully, for he shall come up and shall be, come strong with a small people. 
become strong with the small people. The number of people that outnumber the Jesuits themselves in this country, absolutely. But see, the influence of the Jesuit, beg your pardon, but the influence of the Jesuit is such, okay, the influence that they have brought in by bringing in their agents and intermingling them uh, in this society, in this country, and influencing everything from politics, entertainment, religion, okay? Proverbs 6, verses 12 on to verse 14. Proverbs 6, verses 12 on to verse 14. A naughty person, a wicked man walketh with a froward mouth. He winketh with his eyes. He speaketh with his feet. He teacheth with his fingers. That video you saw the, the Jesuit priest guy? Yeah. Frowardness is in his heart. He deviseth mischief continually. He soweth discord. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly. Suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. And unfortunately, brethren, that's what's going to come upon us here in America. So many of you are ignorant about this, and willfully so, because you want to watch the television shows that the uh, Jesuits give you. You want to believe the news that they tell you. Okay? When Catholicism brings their gavel down on America, they already have, but in more dramatic of a fashion, how many of my American countrymen are just going to be caught unawares? I also want to share it out. I'm going to be quoting some stuff that came from Eric John Phelps. Eric John Phelps, expert on the Jesuits, but yet he's still alive. Hmm. His writings on the Jesuits are second to none. Yes, they are. But he himself... <laughs> but I want to read a couple of this. Uh, and uh, this will be, uh, this is from the Catholic Confidential thing. This, uh, the link will be in the description box for you to look at yourself. All right. Uh, we're going to be reading, there are, what is this? 15 points that Eric John Phelps brings up. We're going to be, um, we're going to be reading ver number 7. On to, oh, 11, okay? Now, like I said, this will be in the description box for you, the link for this. So, number seven, consenting to the Jesuit Supreme Court decisions in removing the Protestant Bible and prayer from the bulwark of American liberty so hated by the Jesuits, the public school system. Eight, Consenting to the immigration of millions of Roman Catholics and pagan persons of color whose loyalty to the Pope or their own race, religion, and nationality is greater than their loyalty to our Protestant Constitution and Republican form of government. And that, that is true. And that, that's a Masonic document, but never mind that. Thereby creating a multitude of agitations justifying more centralization of power in Washington, D.C., and through amalgamation, the Africanization of the American white Celtic Anglo-Saxon race being historically the greatest enemy of the Jesuit order, especially its Bible-believing Protestants and Baptists as intended by the Company of Jesus pursuant to its Jesuit oath. Number nine. Consenting to the Jesuit Supreme Court's several decisions of forced integration resulting in the destruction of both the white and black races through amalgamation as the exchange of virtue, verse, as the exchange of viruses, bacteria, and parasites unique to each race creates powerful combinations 
in the offspring producing a non-resistant weak and sterile population within five generations. Mm -hmm. Right away, uh, sickle cell, which is, uh, Japhethians can have it, but the sickle cell disease is more predominant in those of ham. Okay? That, and that's, that's science. That's provable. Okay? <clears throat> Consenting to the Jesuit Supreme Court decision of legalized abortion resulting in the mass murder of unborn babies, polluting the land with innocent blood, ultimately collapsing the Ponzi scheme called the Social Security System. Yeah, yeah. Justifying mass murder of the elderly by the coming fascist dictator, provoking the Lord against us to consume us until there be no remnant nor escaping in the land by means of a massive military invasion composed of a co coalition of nations cleansing the land with the blood of unrepentant and unforgiven American murderers. He's talking about, like he has always talked about, a foreign uh, nation coming and invading us, but we have already been invaded. Okay? The thing about Eric John Phelps is he gets a little too into the, um, the thing about kindreds. He gets a little too into it, a little too much, a little too much, a little too much. And um, that will be it. We, like I said, the link for this will be in the description box. But see, that is what the Jesuit order has done. That is what they are doing. They are bringing, they have been doing this for years, people. Right now, as it sits, there is a Jesuit army, an army of Catholics, Loyal to the Vatican first, above anything, even above their own selves, that at the behest of Rome will rise and destroy this nation with, from within once and for all. And they have already done a part of it, the actual physical thing, where they're, you know, that has yet. They've already done it from the inside out. You need to be aware of this. You need to keep this in mind this year when you're seeing all this political finagling done to you. Folks, people, it is drama. It is theater. You are seeing unreality flashed before your face. The reality comes when you turn that off and you got an eviction notice in your hand. The reality is you turn this off and you're going to get your electric turned off because you can't pay the bill. You're going to starve because you can't put food in the fridge. Hmm? you got to be aware of this. I personally hope, I personally hope that, and it's not going to happen because of how my countrymen are, but I, it would be so beautiful if no one, no one, went out to vote. What would happen? Did that, they, they'd actually have to put someone in, right? But what would happen if no one voted? Hmm? That's not going to happen because people, like I said, people believe that they have, uh, that they can do something about the government. They can't. They can't. The only one who can is the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord Jesus Christ has established this government here in America for judgment upon it. You need to be aware of these things. Any questions? There will be several resources for you in the description area. Um, check out Brother um, um, Perfect Standard KJV. He has a lot of stuff where he talks about this. So, I, like I said, this was this was a video that um, this was what I thought I was going to do Wednesday, but the Lord had something else. Um, like I said, I'm not against you know people coming to this country. Not at all. I'm not against us helping others, not at all. But you got to re remember, in this great influx of immigration that we are seeing here in America, Jesuits, the Vatican is getting its army here. It's already here in America. This secret army of loyal papists.
Be aware of this. Be aware of this when it comes time for you to do, you know, to vote. Don't vote, people. Don't vote. It's meaningless. That's going to be it for this video. Got to put these two together and put this on the channel. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. If you get offended by this, I'm sorry. You got to deal with this. You got to come to terms with this because this is how it is. America is gone. It won't return again. Because it was never here in the first place. Thank you. There's a brother of ours from the Northeast who's dealing with uh, death in the family. Please pray for him. Our brother from North Dakota, Brother Jeff, um, he needs your prayers uh, for the arduous process. He, he, he had basically had his identity stolen from him. Identity theft. You know, why would someone want to... It's amazing what one will go through to try to reclaim an identity that's given to you via plastic or paper. It really is. Please keep him in your prayers as well. Please pray for one another. We love you. And we'll see you in the next video.